All my dreams are coming true. My career as a filmmaker is taking off. I'm traveling the world and seeing my family. I'm living in the most amazing apartment in Hollywood. My car is a brand new Camaro. I'm even hanging out with Ryan Gosling. I'm having the best year of my life. I think the only thing that would make it better is uh, if any of that actually happened, <laughs> instead of just being an elaborate trick I generated entirely with artificial intelligence. Science fiction author Arthur C. Clarke wrote that sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So for my next trick, I'm going to need a volunteer. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> who, wants to, who wants to help me out? Yes, you, right there with the, I think you have glasses on. Like row five, seat three, stage left, wonderful. Okay, hi. What's your name? Lindsay. Lindsay, I'm Kyle, so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is an ordinary deck of cards. Uh, you know, I, got, I actually took it from my parents' house. That's why it's so beat up. Go ahead and grab any card you want from there. And when you have it, place it face down on top of the deck and hand it back to me. Okay. I always wanted to be a magician, but I'm not one. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> Thank you. That's it. Another round of applause for our volunteer. You take a seat. Wonderful. Our volunteer's card was the Ace of Spades. Ta-da! <laughs> um, that wasn't the trick. <laughs> you see, the trick already happened before any of us even entered this building. Let me rewind. In 1956, visionary mathematician and computer scientist John McCarthy first coined the term artificial intelligence. But he wasn't even on my radar until around this time last year. I uh, just moved back from LA into my parents' house. And this was right around when those text-to-image AIs were starting to come out. Dolly, Midjourney, Stable Diffusion. You may have heard of these. You know, you type anything you want and it generates an image of that. So I thought, I wonder if there's a way to use this for my new profile picture. One problem with that, though. These AIs, they know what people look like, but they don't know what you specifically look like, unless you tell it. So, using thousands of images of random people mixed in and weighted against 30 of what I thought were pretty handsome photos of me, <laughs> I created a custom model of myself. All I had to do was click generate. So after a bit of trying, this is what I came up with. Look at that tortured genius type. <laughs> when I posted that, not to brag, but it got a lot of likes. Mission accomplished, right? The notifications started rolling in, and I thought, you know, why not keep going with this? So for the next month, I generated my whole social media feed entirely with artificial intelligence. I took a trip to New York City. When you're in New York, you got to get a slice of thin crust pizza. I took a walk through Central Park. Afterwards, I met up with my cousin. Uh, that's not actually my cousin. Um, <laughs> that's not actually anyone. That person doesn't exist. I even created a custom model of my dog, Coco, so I could post pictures of her. Here she's in a little hat. Are these fakes perfect? I thought they were pretty good. Keep in mind, this was a year ago, before these images saturated the entire internet. And everyone I know was believing what I was posting. The problem I was having was that the pictures were getting less and less likes as time went on. That's when it hit me. If I can generate anything, why not generate a whole new life? So I left my parents' house and moved back to Los Angeles. I had to, so I could be on set to film my big new project. Here I am moving into my new apartment. Check out those hardwood floors and the view from that place. It was unreal. <laughs> I didn't stop there, though. I went out and bought a brand new sports car. I 
even met my favorite celebrity, Ryan Gosling. <laughs> Not to brag, but that got a lot of likes. At this point, I was generating and reviewing hundreds of images for every final photo you saw that I posted. But if you followed me online, you'd think, wow, Kyle's having the best year of his life. I just want to say, getting to be here today and talk with you about all this, see you laugh and, and react to this story, it, it feels so good. Because the truth is that last year was the worst year of my life. You know, you know, things happen. I had to leave all my friends behind in Los Angeles. I left my career behind. I, I left everything behind. It was tough. But when I started this dumb ruse, you know, I, I got that hit of dopamine again, that, that validation you get when you post online. Even though it was fake, it was obviously fake. I swear, it kind of felt real. People congratulated me. They complimented me. They approved of me. Even though in real life, I was... I didn't have a real life. I was just sitting in my childhood bedroom. Still. Sometimes I think it's easier to live in your own world. I, of course, came clean with a YouTube video. Not to brag, but that got a lot of likes. <laughs> and it did well. I thought that meant things were better, but you know, months went by, and the truth is, I don't know if it is. Nobody trusts me anymore. When I post something or say that I'm doing something, people ask, is this fake? Is this AI? In fact, when I posted about this TEDx talk, people asked me, is this real? Well, what do you think? Is this real? I mean, because obviously I'm standing here in front of you, <laughs> but <laughs> what if what I'm saying isn't real? What if I told you that every word I've said was generated entirely with artificial intelligence? It wasn't. <laughs> but did you feel that shift in the room when I said that? Something changed. Why? Do you, you felt maybe betrayed a little bit? Right? You felt like you cared about me, and then you felt lied to. That sounds familiar. <laughs> you felt that maybe it cheapened what I was saying, even though what I was saying was still exactly the same. You were enjoying it. Remember, we were laughing. But then I said AI wrote it, and suddenly you felt an uncomfortable feeling. What is that? I think that there is a certain spark to human life, a purpose that, through lived experience, imbues meaning into anything created by humans that we can instinctively recognize. Take this painting, for example. This is from an Impressionist artist I found named Julian Moreau. Impressionism is, of course, a radical artistic reaction to the rapid modernization of society in the late 1800s. You can imagine what being alive at this time must be like, you know, the world changing in, in sudden and confusing ways because of advancing technology. This artist is actually a really great example of this because he lived in Paris. He actually worked at a factory, which at the time was very dangerous, and around 1860 he was fed up, and he fled the city for a coastal town near Normandy called Deauville to find peace. This painting is called Morning in Deauville. 
And you could see how he felt about the town in the painting. If you zoom in, you can see his brush strokes, energetic, deliberate, meaningful, only possible through lived experience. Just kidding, I generated this entire painting with AI. <laughs> and then I pasted it into ChatGPT and had ChatGPT come up with the entire backstory. Seriously, uh, here's the prompt I used for it. And if you look at that, you can see village street painting, brush strokes. Let's take a look at another painting. I generated this same prompt. Now that we know that, you could look at it in a new light. What's it saying, right? Nothing. That's how these generative AIs work. They, they are sort of just an average, right? They are trained on so much data, and based on your prompt, they show you what they think you are most likely trying to see. So yeah, this is a village street, or a computer's idea of it. Can we even enjoy art that wasn't created by humans to communicate something? Just kidding, my mom painted that. <laughs> she really did, and I actually think it's really good. <laughs> so, <laughs> seriously, um, it is real, it's in my kitchen right now. <laughs> or is that AI? Oh, no. Right, now you don't know what to think. <laughs> that uncomfortable feeling is back. This is where we are going. I know this because this is where I've been. I have something to show you. Hi, TEDx audience. I hope the talk went well. I'm still working on writing it. I imagine by now I will have at least made one point clear. The future is already here. And you are already living in it. Trust me, I would know. Just like I would know, the volunteer is going to pick the ace of spades. Hey, maybe that's just a lucky guess. Now, would everyone in the audience please give a round of applause to the person seated stage left, row five, seat three. I look forward to meeting you. How is that possible? Because to predict that accurately, there are thousands of potential variables and combinations and outcomes. That's too much for any human to do. Right now, we are at a pivotal moment. What I learned from my experience is not that AI can create a perfect fake of something, yet. What I learned is that AI can create many imperfect fakes quickly and easily. It can create so many fakes that as much as we dig, we will never be able to find the bottom of it. These fakes, these many different things that will be created not by humans, they will saturate our reality and blur the edges. They will become so pervasive that they will start to lose the thing that made them fake in the first place. They won't be the outliers anymore. They will just be the news. They will be evidence. They will be stories. They will be scientific breakthroughs. They will be art. They will be everywhere. And that's just how it will be. The synthetic will become indistinguishable from the authentic. The sufficiently advanced technology will be indistinguishable from magic. Is magic real? Of course not. But when you see it, it feels real, right? It's not a black and white thing. Nor will anything be moving forward. As this technology advances, you will have to redefine what is artificial and what is actual. You will have to reassess what it means to be human, because we took that for granted. You will have to wonder if some things ever happened or if that even matters anymore. You will have to decide what is true and choose what you believe when everything 
is fake, you will determine your own reality. Thank you.